has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, Carver. Hi. And, and, you know, I hear this story about uh, David Bakhtiari, you know. Honestly, like, when are they going to just move on from this guy? He is absolutely peanut brittle. He's always injured. When is that guy not on the injury report? I mean, it's every Uh, week of his life. Constant uh, on the injury report. Listen, those those are some tricky injuries for Green Bay, uh, trying to start a new offense without Devontae Adams. Uh, You know, not new per se, but not having him out there. Bakhtiari, Lazard. Vikings sounding better and better by the moment uh, at home, getting the point and a half, Scotty. Let's talk about the Sunday night game, the first one of the season, as the Bucks will go to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Tom Brady was gone. Now he's back. He left for a couple weeks during training camp. Every day we have another Giselle story that she pressured him into retirement. Blah, 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 blah. If he would just go away, we would stop having to hear about it because... They still ask him about it before the first game of the season. Here we go. You're 45. You're not on the contract for next year. Do the thoughts ever creep in, Tom? Uh, this might be my last time around. Uh, how do you keep those thoughts uh, out of your head? the 12th straight season. They're asking I think we're this. all getting one day older at a time. So, you know, we're all not sure whether we're going to be here next year or not. You know, for this yeah, is a reality for every player, every coach, every parent. Um, you know, you just never know. So. We should all take advantage of the opportunity that we have, which is the one we have in front of us now. Look, here's the deal. If this guy even remotely is having alleged marital problems, I don't know anyone on the face of the earth uh, that has ever had them uh, that isn't distracted by them. In other words, if you're having problems with your wife and you're not, uh, even if it's true that he's not living with her, if they are having like the outs and that's even remotely true that that was why he was gone for two weeks is because he's having problems with his marriage. I don't know how anyone can uh, execute or concentrate on their job or anything else. When you got something like that creeping in your mind, I don't know how you sleep. I don't know how you do anything when you have that kind of problem, which is, you know, a gigantic one and a pain in the ass. Uh, and I think it would throw anyone off their game. I don't deny what he's done. I don't deny his greatness. I don't deny the seven rings. I don't uh, deny any of that. But I do accept the fact that he's 45. I already know he's slow. And I want to see if he can just keep doing what everybody thinks he's going to be doing. I I don't see it. Now, uh, some people think that that division's wide open. I don't believe that. I still think they're the best team in that division. The Saints have to prove it to me. And I don't think those other teams have a shot. So uh, I still think a playoff berth is uh, theirs easily. I agree with you. I don't think that that division is wide open whatsoever. Uh, Bucks will find a way to take care of business there. For the Cowboys, Scotty, yesterday out of nowhere, Dak Prescott ends up on the injury report with an ankle. Of course, that he got his ankle all fixed up a couple of years ago. Dak says, I am fine. You just have to put everything on the injury report these days. Here he is. Uh, no, honestly, I feel great. Uh, something may come up uh, in the report, but uh, <laughs> as you know, that's this league, and if you don't report a hangnail, you'll get suspended or, you'll, or they'll get fined, excuse me. So, um, but, no, I feel great. Uh, I still feel the best that, uh, that I felt I in a very, very long funny. time. Not even comparable to where I was last year going into this game. So, uh, honestly, just excited, ready, ready for uh, Sunday to get here. Are you going to tell me you're not worried about Tampa's offensive line? We welcome all of our radio affiliates, Sirius XM, Sports Map Radio, Sports Byline USA. Good to have you with us on Coast to Coast on a pain-free Friday. Are you worried at all about all the problems that the Buccaneers have had up front? And if, you know, if I have my way and they have those problems, I mean, I am absolutely throwing Parsons at them on every down. And, and trying to get him running rough shot and rabid after Brady and throwing him down. I've always believed uh, the best way to beat him, and we've only seen it a few times. There's one team that owns him, and that's the New York Giants. They beat him in the Super Bowl twice, and they did it 
by beating his ass and throwing him on the ground and stepping on him. He needs to be tackled, hit, hurried, and abused. They need to rough him up. And that's the only way Dallas wins the game, in my opinion, is put him on his ass. I'm with you. They got to get Parsons at him. They've got some guys in the front seven who should be able to get some pressure on a very hodgepodge Bucks offensive line. Bucks minus two and a half on Sunday night. Total 50 and a half. Where are you leaning on this one right now, Scotty? I mean, you know, on Friday, I'm leaning Dallas. I really am. I, you know, I just think that Dak Prescott, it's his time. He's young. He's strong. He's able to run and get out of the pocket and do things. CeeDee Lamb's a badass. I think Parsons is a freak. They have a lot more than that, too. I like Pollard. I, you know, Zeke at the beginning is always fresh. Uh, they're playing in Dallas. They're playing at Jerry's World. There's a lot of reasons why I like them. I don't deny Tampa can win football games. I don't deny that they're good. Uh, I, I do believe they're beatable. Uh, I'm with you. I think the Cowboys are very, very live at home getting that two and a half, maybe to win that game outright. All right, we have four or five other games that we will rapid fire get through when we come back, Scotty, and then we will start college football, including a game at the bounce house tonight between UCF and Louisville to kick off our college football weekend. And then the uh, blue carpet up in Boise. The Broncos taking on the Lobos. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College That's football the today. Alabama in winning SEC championship. It's the island of misfit tours. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football them today. Years when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash. In-game, live, take all the points. access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In-game, live, prime time. I'm a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international, Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. I don't know how it's going to work out for him, but I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season. Maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category. Earlier in his career, he would have gotten out. I mean, I guess he had 108 rushing yards, but six rushing touchdowns in his career, so it doesn't give you any upside there. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting. Fantasy Sports Today. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The Dolphins now a three and a half point favorite against New England. It's just so much mystery between both teams. You know, we talked about the Patriots and losing McDaniels. You know, they, they get rid of the fullback in the offseason. They're going to look to be more vertical down the field. And then they lose Thornton, the rookie wide receiver, who was one of their best playmakers in training camp, right? So, and then they have, you know, who's calling the plays, Joe Judge, Matt Patricia. Just so much unknown with the Patriots. The Sports Grid Network. 
the early line. The sky is the limit for Micah Parsons. So if we're looking overall, this is an award, Kevin, the Defensive Player of the Year. It doesn't go to a middle linebacker who makes a lot of tackles. And quite frankly, it rarely goes to a DB because what do you have to have? 15 interceptions in 17 games to even get a look at this point. And the better of the cornerback you are, the less statistics that you have. And if you don't have statistics, some voters, Kevin, are going to tell you, I can't vote for you. You only had one interception. Yeah, but I'm the best cornerback in football. Nobody throws only my way. Only on Sports Grid. Well, Carver, I got to tell you, I thought that game was in Boise. It's actually in uh, Albuquerque, right, at New Mexico in that uh, small stadium that there's 40,000 seats. Uh, It certainly makes that game a lot harder for Boise State to cover 17 on the road when they looked so bad last week. Certainly does. Uh, They were awful up in Corvallis against the Beavers. Uh, Now they open up the Mountain West schedule on the road against New Mexico, who's not a good team, as we know, but still – Uh, A tricky trip on a Friday night. We'll win the game, as we'll discuss. It's the spread that we need to try to find our way through uh, for the Broncos tonight out in Albuquerque. All right, here's the rest of the NFL game, Sky, that we have not touched on yet. First, the Saints will open the season in Atlanta against the Falcons. Jameis Winston, good to go. Minus five and a half. Road favorites for New Orleans. Marcus Mariota will start for Atlanta. 43 is the total. I mean, that is just a brutal spread uh, with two teams that I just, are, you know, think are so unproven. We don't have any clue. Like, all these people, Sean Payton, everybody else thinks the Saints are going to win the South. No, they're not. And I just don't believe in it. I don't even think uh, Famous can stay healthy for the whole season because he never does. Uh, and here they go on the road to Mercedes in Hot Town, and they're going to, you know, win by six. I mean, I just think it's super dangerous. I am leaning on the Saints to win this game. I don't believe in uh, the Falcons, but, you know, I'm not sure either one of them are good. And you know how I feel about two bad teams. I think they're uh, usually playing a pretty good close game. Two bad teams, close game, and I'll probably take the points uh, with Atlanta, as crazy as that is. The Ravens did announce today, Scotty, they did not come to terms on a new deal with Lamar Jackson by the deadline Ravens now, of course, can franchise tag him, not just next year, but the two seasons after that. I'm sure they will try to work something out. uh, But now you're going to get into franchise tag territory, Scotty, when it comes to Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, who are six-and-a-half-point favorites at MetLife against the Jets on Sunday, 44-and-a-half the total. Well, I think it's embarrassing that they didn't get a deal done with their star quarterback when – Frankly, everyone else in the NFL did get their deals done, right? Like, who didn't get a deal done besides him? I just think it looks bad on Baltimore's half of things, not his, on theirs. The front office, the owner didn't get it done. Uh, And now he's clearly upset about it, even though he'll say he isn't. He is guaranteed they didn't get the deal done. So this is what happens there was a deadline you didn't meet it now you got the aaron judge uh factor you're just like all right i'm gonna bet on me and now i'm gonna stick it to you a little more at the end of the season i think it puts them in a a backwards position where they're backpedaling going into the end of the season knowing that he's gonna stick it to him even further if he has a big year which he will he'll do it now to spite him they should have got that deal done this week and they didn't I still think they roll the Jets. I am not buying Joe Flacco and the New York Jets like everybody else is. I told you every year these idiots here, they bet and talk about the Giants and Jets like they're going to the Super Bowl and they don't sniff it. I don't deny that the Giants have won four Super Bowls, but it has been a long time. It seems like 20 years, doesn't it? Even though it hasn't been, it seems like a long time since they've been good and won Super Bowls because they've been that bad. Jets right now with the longest uh, playoff drought in the NFL as we enter the 2022 season. Uh, It's been a while for the Jets, and this year is not going to change things. That's for sure. I read a lot of stories this morning, Scotty, about our next game and how the road Jacksonville Jaguars going into Washington to take on, I guess they're called, uh, what, the Commanders now. 
Uh, all of the tickets, all of the money, backing the dog here on the road. The two and a half with the Jaguars. Will you be doing the same, or does Carson Wentz and Washington interest you? Yeah, I'm not betting on the uh, Jaguars at any point, uh, anytime soon. I have to see it to believe it. I have to see them actually win two or three games before I start uh, putting my money on the table for them. I'm going to bet on uh, Washington in this football game. And I just think it's a terrible game. Uh, It is a terrible game. Uh, Very hard to get involved in that game with everything else that is going on. 425, the Giants will be in Tennessee against the Titans. Giants getting five and a half, Scotty. First game of the Brian Dayball era. 43 and a half is the total. I do like the over in this game. I think that both teams will be able to score a couple of points. You know, I think that I was surprised that it went down to five and a half from six and a half because I got to tell you, I thought that was delicious at six and a half with the Titans winning and kicking their ass and covering. And now at five and a half, I'm even more convinced. I do not believe for one minute that Daniel Jones is going into Nashville to beat a team that was the conference number one seed last year that had a bad day against the Bengals. Tannehill had a bad day. They still sacked Burrow nine times. They are a dangerous football team with all parts lubed and a better coach proven. Now, Dable, this is his first head coaching job. I think the Titans are going to roll the Giants like a gigantic spleef. And finally, the Chiefs open their season in Arizona at the Toaster against the Cardinals. Chiefs, six-point road favorites. Kyler Murray against Patrick Mahomes. They're thinking points. 53 and a half the total for this one. Well, I think that's because uh, Mahomes and that offense, they just basically drop back and and fire every down, every snap. It's passing, 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 moving quickly, and uh, trying to get in the end zone. I don't believe in their defense at all. I never did, and I still don't. And they didn't go anywhere last year. Uh, At the end of the day, they didn't get it done, as usual. And I think it was because of their defense. I saw that defense up close and personal. I went to see them play in Philly. They are not good. I don't think they stop anybody. And I think Kyler Murray is going to score on the Chiefs. They're going to be in that game. That's going to be a good game. I think that game's within that window, within that six and a half, six, whatever it is. Uh, And it must be the start of the NFL season as we get uh, Frank Clark off the field news. Uh, He pleaded no contest to gun charges. Gets one year probation. Your boy Frank always in the mix, Scotty. Uh, with some kind of blotter, uh, that's for sure. So there you go. Uh, The NFL games for this week, we do have more props for you coming up next with the lion's share. Before we get there, though, Sky, let's start the college football. We'll do more of it after we do the props. Let's do tonight's games. We mentioned already, Boise goes to New Mexico. That's a 9 p.m. Eastern kick tonight. They start the Mountain West season there. Boise right now, minus 17, the road favorite. They're in Albuquerque, and in the early game, Louisville off an embarrassing loss at the Dome against Syracuse, getting six at the bounce house in Orlando. The Gus Bus, UCF, these two teams played a wild game last year in Louisville. 61.5 is the total. That's all I like tonight, Scotty. Over 61.5. Let's go. Fair enough. I like Central Florida at home. I think that place is going to be rocking. I think that their quarterback can... Uh, actually throw it and run it. He's a 250-300 thrower, and he's a 100 runner every game. I think he's going to give Louisville problems, and I think they'll get it done tonight in Orlando, and I also think Louisville will have problems with that heat and humidity. And are we going to – I know the Boise being on the road now, can they still catch that lumber with the 17 against the Lobos? I think they still – Well, I'm not going to turn now. Uh, It's my my mistake uh, real bad. I thought the game was in Boise. I never uh, focused enough on it to, I guess, care. I just thought this game was on the blue carpet and that they were going to absolutely spank the Lobos. So I can't change off of it now. I'm still on Boise. Uh, Their quarterback sucks. He looked terrible last week. If he doesn't get it going, they're going to bench his ass. But I still like them tonight against the Lobos. I think I think New Mexico and New Mexico State, both are hair dryer city. They should still roll the Lobos. I don't care where they're playing the game. All right, we'll come back. The lion's share. Today on the lion's share, 
We've got NFL props for Sunday, but I didn't leave you hanging with the strikeouts and the homers, Scotty. We're going to squeeze those in as well for tonight. Let's go. Let's go. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. If Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record, I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year. Right, taking the over on that one, to be quite honest with you, there's a lot of questions in Houston that they're still trying to figure out. It's a young team, and I think it's going to be kind of an up and down year for them. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. Football Giants in the late rain down in Tennessee. Does anybody think this game is going to be a shootout? 35 34, <laughs> raise your hands. Absolutely not come home back home to the birds but again the thing is i know we have to add these stupid caveats of we're eagles fans but you out there know how talented this football team is it absolutely could be their season the early line only on sports grid fantasy sports today alvin Kamara, deandre swift uh, Devontae adams stefan diggs travis kelsey and the reason why i want to bring that up is because uh, in terms of Kelsey, I didn't notice this yesterday until after I got done with the Newswire show that Patrick Mahomes apologized to fantasy owners, essentially saying that this year it ain't going to be all about Hill and Kelsey. You're going to have to guess on a week to week basis. So I'd love to hear those sort of comments. Doesn't make me feel any better. Uh, you're at the turn. Who are your two? The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. If that's not the greatest stoner conversation ever, when you're on about five <laughs> rips of chronic and you start talking about your ankles and your elbows and your knees and your shoulders and, and rubbing things, I mean, you got to be paid. Yeah. I don't know what was going on there, but you just got to be paid. I like Jameis. I hope he stays healthy. Uh, I do like him. He's fun. Uh, 49ers I hope he's healthy tight this end Sunday George. against the Falcons. The Sports Grid Network. The brighter the lights, the bigger the stakes. Hunt or be hunted. Know your prey. This is a whole new jungle. This is The Lion's Share. Brought to you by BetMGM. All right, uh, Carver High, Lion's Share time. By the way, real quick, uh, this whole disaster, we'll talk about it more with Mafia later on the UFC card in Vegas tomorrow night, but Chemayev misses weight. They're saying now they're going to change the entire card where Chemayev, I think, now might fight Kevin Holland in the main event, possibly a five-round main event. Holland says if it's not five rounds, he's not fighting, and he's the one that uh, allegedly caused that whole backstage fracas with – the press conference being canceled yesterday because he started fights with everybody in the backstage and it got, I mean, they were throwing chairs. Then uh, I guess Diaz would fight uh, Tony Ferguson. And I'm guessing that would be a three round fight. And Mafia mentioned some other fight and fighters names. And I, it was like speaking uh, Russian. I had no idea what he was saying to me. So I don't even care about any other fights on that card. I'll let him do the damage there, but let's do the lion's share now. But that whole fight card has been ruined. 
Yes, uh, it sounds like it has. Mafia will get you filled in at the top of the hour. It is lion share time, Scotty. Bet MGM. It's time to throw the football into the mix on the lion share for a Friday. Let's go, Scotty. We will start with passing props. Baker Mayfield, we've been waiting. He's going to play the Browns on Sunday, Scotty. Here is the number, 219 and a half, but it's gone down to 215 and a half now. It's gone down four since this morning, Scotty. Are we going to go with the where it's heading and go under here? Minus 120 to the under. No, I think he can throw for 220 yards. I don't think that's any big deal. He's at home. He's lit. He's healthy. He's fast. Uh, I think he can uh, do that. Uh, but, you know, the Browns are tough defensively. It's going to be close. Uh, but I think he can go 220. I'm with you. I'm taking the over for Baker. Derek Carr has been waiting to get Devontae Adams on the field with him, Scotty. They take on the Chargers 265 and a half for Carr in this game. Minus 110 to the over, minus 115 to the under. I think, win or lose, he gets himself over the 265 and a half on Sunday. I think he's 300 every week the whole season. I mean, I, this guy is going to do his thing with Adams and, and Waller and Renfro. Are you kidding me? I think he's 3350 every week. I really you do. Knew that it, you know I'm with you. So overs for Mayfield and for Carr to start us off with the passing. Let's go to the running backs and the rushing department. And you knew we were going to get the Steelers involved for the first week at a lion's share, Scotty, with the props. Let's get Najee Harris going in Cincinnati on Sunday. 58 and a half for Harris. Minus 115 to the over, minus 115 to the under. I am going over, Scotty. Let's go. Listen, this guy had 1,200 yards running straight up the middle last year in that boring Canada offense that they have. Uh, 58 and a half yards. He's going to have that in the first half. Let's go. We'll try to cash another with that one. For the second rushing prop for the Lions share, I'm going to Dalvin Cook for the Vikings. Cook, historically, Scotty, doesn't matter who's out there, he crushes the Packers. And I think he's going to do it again this week. He is healthy coming into week one. This was 70 and a half. It's down one to 69 and a half. That's fine with me. Over 69 and a half for Dalvin Cook, minus 110. Uh, he's going to have minus 110. He's going to have plus 110. He's going to have a buck 10 at least. A buck 10 for Dalvin. Let's go, baby. Get us fired up on the line. I mean, it's funny to me. Like they, act like, a, they act like 100 yards is some kind of like feat. Are you kidding yeah. me? This guy can run for 100 yards in his sleep. Well, let's hope he does it for us on Sunday against the Packers. Receiving, we will start with the Dolphins. And why? No, we are not starting with Tyreek Hill. All the attention, Scotty, is going to be on Tyreek Hill playing his first game with the Miami Dolphins. We are going to go to the guy who was really good for them last year in his rookie season, and I expect him to be even better this year. Jalen Waddell, 59 and a half against the Pats on Sunday, minus 115 to the over. You know, my guess is no, because I think he's going to just try to hit uh, Hill all day and, and Gusecki. And I think uh, it'll take about three weeks before Waddle starts complaining about his role. Wow. Think Waddle's going to have a problem with uh, trying to feed Hill all day long. We shall see. We heard from Matty Ice earlier on Coast to Coast. They want to start fast against the Texans on Sunday. We know about Jonathan Taylor and the run game for the Colts, but... Matty Ice's number one guy, Michael Pittman Jr. I know Wentz was there last year. This guy had a great year. Now he's got Matty Ice. 64 and a half, now down to 62 and a half. I do not care. Over 62 and a half for Pittman against the Texans. I mean, this guy's going to have 65 yards by the end of the first quarter. By the end of the first quarter. That's what I like yes. to hear. Matty Ice getting Pittman involved. All right, he's going to him immediately. Immediately. Tutties. Tutties, tutties, tutties. Touchdown props for Sunday's slate on the Lions share. Who do we got, Scotty? Lamar Jackson didn't get his contract today. Well, guess what? You said it earlier. He's going to be looking to show out this year. I think he gets a rushing touchdown against the Jets on Sunday, plus a buck 40. We mentioned the Browns are going to try to run the ball a lot, right? Yeah, Nick Chubb, he's there. How about Kareem Hunt? Finding the end zone against the Panthers at plus 180. 
Darren Waller. Yes, we know that Adams is there now. Waller destroys the Chargers. He's got a bunch of touchdowns against them, plus 130. And the big ball for the touchdowns this week, Scotty. No more Gronk for Brady in Tampa. More Cameron Brait in the red zone for Tom Brady at plus 230 for Cameron Brait. Well, look at that number. I say no on that. And... Uh, I think Lamar Jackson will score a touchdown. Uh, I think Hunt will, and I'll say no on Waller uh, at L.A. at SoFi. But, you know, he can do anything. He can have a big game and not score a touchdown, or he can score two touchdowns. I'm just throwing a dart against the bar, uh, you know, uh, right now with that one. Well, we got you for two out of the four. Uh, Hopefully it'll be like the home runs, and we're going to ring the bell uh, all day on Sunday with these touchdown props on the lion's share. Now, just because we got football on Sunday doesn't mean, Scotty, I was going to leave you hanging with the baseball props like we do every single day. A little abbreviated, but we're still going to give them to you. Strikeouts for tonight in Major League Baseball. How about Ross Stripling for the Blue Jays? Four and a half for him. He's uh, over the four and a half in five straight and seven of his last eight. You've got Drew Rasmussen going for the Rays against the Yankees tonight. Yankees have Hicks hitting third, and Kiner Falefa hitting fourth tonight. Rasmussen's number's four and a half. Uh, he has gone over that in three of his last four starts. I like him to go over again. Lance McCullers against the Angels had seven against them last time out. I think he'll go over again. And Robbie Ray, Scotty, who has been very good to us on the lion's share, six and a half against the Braves, was under in his last start. He was over the five starts before that. Let's find a few strikeouts against Atlanta. Yeah, I, I don't think he's going to do that against the Braves. I think they're too tough. And I think McCullers will get it done at Minute Maid. I think Rasmussen will definitely get it done in the Bronx with the lineup they've been rolling out lately. And remember, I hit that Twins in-game last night at a buck and a half on PharrellOnTheBench.com. In-game, baby. And then, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying uh stripling tonight in arlington having five strikeouts i'm not i'm not buying that there you go the strikeouts tonight for the lion's share and finally it is tater time let's go a lot of guys with some good history for tonight scotty including patrick corbin the gas can on the mound for the nationals against the phillies we tried hoskins earlier in the week i gotta go back 10 for 34 and three home runs off of Patrick Corbin in his career. Let's go for him tonight at plus 230. Santander against the kid Bello and the Red Sox at Camden Yards, plus four bills for him. Cattell Marte, let's get the Marte party going at Coors tonight at plus 360. Why? 12 for 40 off of Herman Marquez and two dingers. And Will Smith of the Dodgers faces Clevenger tonight, Scotty. Three for five and two home runs off of Clevenger in his career. Will Smith checking in at plus 260 tonight against them. Yeah, I like that one uh, at Petco. I'll go with you there. Uh, I'll take a stab with uh, Marte. I'm going to say no on Santander. And uh, I'll go yes on Hoskins. Uh, Schwarber also with two homers in his career off of Patrick Corbin. Almost felt like everybody on the Phillies. Sprinkle Harper on there tonight. Harper and Schwarbaum, sprinkle them on. Uh, As we know, we like to go after Patrick Corbin whenever uh, he pitches. And on the other side, Victor Robles, I couldn't use him because he left the game yesterday with a bad neck. Six for 15 with three homers off of Syndergaard. So Robles from the Nationals. Take a look later. If he's in the lineup tonight, might not be because he didn't play yesterday with the neck. Six for 15 with three homers is pretty good. I check in on Robles against Noah tonight, against Syndergaard. And they've actually been playing decent over the last, like, you know, 10, 12 days. They've been, you know, pulling off some upsets and scoring some runs and being difficult and, uh, you know, costing me a little bit of money a couple nights. Well, let's hope that we can ring the bell a few times tonight and on Sunday. I know you like those tweets. Can we get some of the tweets on Sunday for some touchdowns now? We'll ring the bell with a few of these guys with the lion's share. We spread it to the weekend now, Scotty, too, with football here. Let's go. Yeah, and I mean, uh, these props, I'm going to be looking for props 
nonstop so that when I do the show with Marenzi on Sunday, 1 to 4 East on In Game Live All Access, I'll be divvying out all kinds of props and I'll have them on my website as well. So I'm looking for NFL props out the wazoo. Let's go. The Lion's Share, presented by Pet MGM. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like fantasy Magic. sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penis. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like, so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take it for one. In game, oh, live, man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Who do you expect more from this evening? I think the Bills are, are going to have more success offensively, but I really, when it comes to the receivers, I think we're going to see uh, Stefan Diggs um, really have a big game in comparison to where his yardage prop is lying. But he's going to get a lot of the attention from a Buffalo secondary that is really compromised without Tredavious White. And that, that's part of the reason why I'm on the over here is, you know, Buffalo's forced to start Elam, a rookie cornerback. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Most people are pretty optimistic, and I'm certainly in the group, on what Mike McDaniel can be as a play caller, as a head coach in Miami. This is a defense that was top 10 in the NFL last year. Xavier Howard, Byron Jones, one of the better secondaries, usually on a year-to-year basis in Miami. I know it's going to be an uphill battle for them to compete in their division. I think the Dolphins at plus 142 to make the playoffs is a nice piece of business. Only on SportsGrid. Sports Professor Rick Harlow inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Have you heard of Kazoo? If you travel internationally, Italy, Spain, France, you have. It's an online car retailer. We have them in the States, too, with different brands. These guys decided to get into the market pretty quickly by sponsoring every sport under the sun. Cricket, snooker, darts, everything else. And the bottom line is... The company has to be strong in order for a sports marketing deal to be strong. They're cutting back. They're spending 200 million euros less than they did before. And the bottom line is this is a company that may not be as strong as it was when it originally spent the money. So now they're reassessing. They're restructuring. All those words mean that sports sponsorship is great in certain situations, but it's not necessarily the panacea. Sports Professor Ricardo, Sports News Minute. Yeah, I just saw your boy uh, Bon Jovi at the U.S. Open. He looks like he's about 75. And it, I think my wife may uh, take that flyer back on sleeping with him. I mean, honestly, she used to want to sleep with that guy all the time. And I'm like, take a look at him now, Grandpa. Honestly, I mean, I know I'm old as all F, but I, I'm as pretty as a girl still. So I still got that going on. I mean, you can tell Dr. Shivago, right? Uh, Dr. David Chow from Sports Injury Central, ready to rock on a pain-free Friday, getting ready for the First Sunday of pain day in the NFL. Pain day is what it's about because nothing but injuries. That's all that matters going in and going out. George Kittle, Doc, hurt his groin at practice this week. What are the scores you're giving him and what's his uh, status? Well, his status officially isn't out yet, but no matter what they listed as, he's not going to play. He's, it's questionable. Look, 
he had DMP all week long. I mean, do they really want to make it worse? I don't see how he's going to make it and go. I guess his official status is probably going to be questionable. But uh, look, he's lobbying to play, I'm sure. That's why they made it questionable. But the coaches are going to say, look, big boy, we need you for the whole season. Let's let's skip Sunday. I mean, that's a tough way for them to start without their star tight end that they rely so heavily on. I think it's going to affect Lance, don't you? Well, they do say, uh, you know, the tight end's a young quarterback's best friend, right? Because it's the shortest throw over the middle to the tight end. All right, let's talk a little bit about Michael Thomas. What's your score for him? Speaking of guys that have done nothing in the last several years, I mean, I have no idea why we're uh, even worried about this guy. He never lasts. He's peanut brittle. He's glass. Well, the good news is he seems to be better from his ankle finally, but he's got a soft tissue hamstring injury he's dealing with. So, look, uh, they're probably going to try and play him. We have him a six score at a moderate range of 77. So if you're expecting uh, 15 fantasy points, uh, expect no more than 10, right? Uh, in, you know, a lower amount. I think he's going to try and play through. We'll see, but there's no way he's 100% with that hamstring now. Is there any player receiver-wise that's been more injured than him the last couple of years? Well, you could argue it was one injury that knocked him out for two years, right? I mean, uh, that's uh, uh, quite quite the injury, and uh, et cetera. So, uh, obviously, Odell Beckham would uh, like a word there. He tore his ACL, came back, uh, you know, hurt his shoulder, came back, won the Super Bowl, and in the Super Bowl second quarter, retore his ACL. So maybe he's got a challenger there. Talk to me about uh, J.K. Dobbins. Listen, we've been saying all summer long, do not expect J.K. Dobbins to play week one. He's got a lower six score. It was an ACL and LCL tear, meaning meaning it was more significant. This summer when we wrote that, Ravens.com even quoted us, so I'm assuming they're confirming that, uh, what that injury is. And every day there's always the, hey, he looks pretty good. He's looking better. He's looking better. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know what his official status is today. My guess is they're going to leave him questionable because that's just what teams do. It's coach speak. But his quarterback might have spilled the beans or corroborated what we've been saying because Lamar Jackson said a couple days ago, he's looking better and better, but he might need to slow him down. And we're hoping he's out there in a few weeks. So that sort of let the cat out of the bag. You can book it. There's no J.K. Dobbins this weekend. What's the reaction been uh, by medical personnel on these NFL franchises with your work and Sports Injury Central, knowing that you were a longtime uh, team doctor for the Chargers? Uh, you see, you had mentioned that the you know Ravens.com had quoted you, uh, your sources of everything you guys come up with, compiling your numbers. What's the reaction been league-wide to what you guys are doing? Uh, are they uh, cool with it? Are they critical of what you guys do? Does it help them in any stretch? Well, it's been an interesting reaction. You know, until someone knows what we're doing, uh, then there's always a question mark and, and a side eye. But once they figure out what we're doing is above board, it's insider knowledge, not insider information. Big difference, right? Inside information, the SEC will come down on you in, or you're, if you're violating HIPAA. Insider knowledge is what we're doing. And many times we explain things. Let's take the San Diego Chargers, for example. When Tyrod Taylor had his lung puncture, we explain how that doesn't make them a bad doctor and how it could happen, right? Even though we've done lots of them, but there's a risk there. We explain how perhaps JC Jackson, he's not gonna play with his recent minor procedure, why they didn't do it sooner. And players have told me they actually like it because coaches play this day to day, you can't go game, they, they don't let people know the extent of the injury. So I, I've had players tell me they like what I do because they can't go out there and contradict the coach and say my injury's a lot worse. Meanwhile, the fan base is sort of harping on them. Why aren't you practicing and playing? And so we try and get out the what we perceive as the real story, injury analysis as opposed to injury reporting. So great question, Scott. I've been pleasantly surprised that once people know what we're doing and how we go about it, there's actually pretty good acceptance. When you... Uh 
you know, as a great surgeon that you are, you're operating all the time on, on patients and fixing their maladies. Uh, how much fun is it for you to escape that and get into this realm of the you know, SIC and what you're doing for us? Well, in some ways, it's a lot of fun uh, because guess what? My excuse now, sorry, honey, we have to watch football on Sundays and I have to watch football on Thursday. <laughs> I don't think she gets where knows where to find your show or sports grid. So hopefully no one clips it and tags her on Twitter or things. So that part certainly is fun. Like even right now, we're a room full of four guys right now going over the injury reports and game status reports and updating our field views. Talking sports and football is fun and to have some insight. And look, major reporters call me all the time and say, what does this mean? You know, what's this procedure? How long? It's fun to interact. So there is some fun to it, but it is work. I mean, to keep up on all this stuff, it is uh, quite a bit of work. I mean, I, I still have my practice. I just got here from surgery, but in between surgery, I did tape a bunch of other things and do a, a couple other interviews, serious others at Jim Rome spot. Bottom line is it's fun, but a lot of work and you like to be busy. So uh, it's all good. My buddy Romy, we go way back. Uh, what's the story with Lazard? Well, Lazard, one of the things you know we hate is all this preseason stuff because there's no video. Come regular season, there's seven different angles of every video, et cetera. And so right now he hasn't practiced all week from his foot ankle being stepped on, probably rolled it. DMP all week, we all know that means out. He's officially listed as doubtful. But statistically, doubtful has like a 1% chance of playing. I mean, it just I mean, it just leaves the crack open in the door. But he's not playing. But Green Bay's got bigger issues than that. Not only do they have young wide receivers, their number one Alan Lazard out. Tanyan coming back from an ACL, their tight end, is not near 100%. And the book in tackles, David Bakhtiari, this is almost two years. He's barely played. Elton Jenkins coming back from the ACL. They've both been limited in practice. And even if they play, if you look at our field views, you know, their scores are lower there on offense. And so it's not just Lazard. Aaron Rodgers, perhaps without, without edge protection, without a tight end to throw too quickly, or his number one receiver, young receivers, that, that might spell trouble. I got to tell you, Bakhtiari to me is a waste of time. It, guy, it, he never plays. He's always injured. It's been two years now. Like, move on already. Honestly, I'm done with this guy. Chris Godwin, what's the uh, deal with him? Is he good to go or not? Well, he's going to be listed as questionable, et cetera. I don't – look, even if he plays, there's no way it's his usual production. Up until this week, he was wearing a knee brace at, during training camp. You can't play wide receiver with a knee brace. Yes, the knee brace came off, but all week he had a non-contact jersey on. I don't see him going. Actually, earlier this morning, I, I spoke with Rich Gannon and even Bruce Gradkowski, and I asked him – have you ever played with a wide receiver that wore an ACL brace? And if you did, would you throw him the ball? <laughs> Think you can get separation? They both yeah. chuckled and said no. <laughs> hey, so uh, I know Waller's going to play. Deontay Johnson's going to play. What's the deal with Zach Wilson? How does he go from uh, they think he might be able to go week one to now he's not going to play until week four? It's called coach speak. They wanted to keep, you know, the Ravens practicing for Flacco and Wilson. And then uh, two days ago, Robert Sala said, I'm tired of all the questions. He's not playing until week four at the earliest Pittsburgh. And he put it behind him. And one of the reasons is, look, if this is Tom Brady, if this is Aaron Rodgers, you, you can stick him in early without practice. Robert Sala said the worst, it, this was the worst timing for him. You think the worst timing for injury wouldn't be preseason week one. It would be the regular season. But what he's talking about is you lose all the reps you get in preseason in the offense installs. And it's, you don't have that many reps in the regular season because you got to get your starting quarterback ready. You can't spend it on rehab reps with the first team, with Zach Wilson. And they're smart to give him a little more time because of that because he's a young quarterback. He's not ready to go. But remember, they have tap problems at left tackle and right tackle. Makai Becton done for the season. They brought in Dwayne Brown, and he might be done for the season. They're signing. So that's probably smart to spare the young guy the, uh, the angst of, uh, of the first couple of weeks of the season. All right, there he is, Dr. Shivago, Dr. David Chow at Sports Injury Central. You can follow him at Pro Football Doc on social media. Dr. Chow, have a great weekend, my friend. Take care of everything out there in San Diego. Good luck with your Chargers against the Raiders at SoFi. And the Rams looked really good last night, I just wanted to say. <laughs> have a great weekend, buddy. All right, Carver High, let's get into the uh, college football again. 
Uh, we've only talked about the Friday games. We got a big one in Austin on Saturday with Sarkeesian's boys trying to dance with the devil, Mr. Saban, and the tie favored by 20. He- We certainly do. The big game on the board coming up tomorrow, a high noon Eastern kickoff between Texas and Alabama in Austin. Of course, we've made a huge deal. We haven't. Other people had of Sarkeesian, you know, spending a year and a half on the staff for Saban, and that's going to make a big deal. He's Nick Saban. That's what matters. 20 and a half for Bama on the road tomorrow, 65 and a half. I told you all week, if it stayed under 21, I'm going with Alabama. Hell, Scotty, I'd probably even take him if it did get over 21. I think they're going to whack him. Yeah, I like him first half, too, at like whatever it is, 12 uh, to cover that. I think they'll be up by 20 at the half. Uh, I think they'll cover this number as well. I'm not worried about it. I got to tell you, though, these giant games that become national television Uh, you know, specials where everybody just can't get enough of these big games, the Utah, Florida game, you know, all these games that they marquee as the biggest games. Uh, They are the most dangerous games, in my view, to bet. Uh, It's always some crazy game with the number is hanging by a thread and you're in all kinds of stress. There's so many more games that are of value that are better plays on the board. Last week, I went 30 and 11 in spreads. I hit every West Coast game. Air Force, Nevada, Oregon State. There are so many teams playing out in the West that are better bets, sharper plays than going after all these prime time and national television games that everybody cares about. And then you always find out, like I got burned on Utah, right? Uh, it, It just never ends. The Ohio State game did not live up to the billing. That's all they talked about for a month was Ohio State, Notre Dame. That game sucked. There are much better games to bet on. And later on in the final hour of Coast to Coast, I will get you a whole bunch of those games uh, because there is a full slate on Saturday, that's for sure, including some good West Coast ones late night. You better believe it, and I'm going to hit them. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College the football today. Alabama in winning SEC champions. It's the Island of Misfit Tour. Fantasy sports so, today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Two years when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash. In-game live take all access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In-game live. Prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international. Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. Well, boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Are you looking for an edge for football betting this year? What if you could get insider knowledge from former team doctors about the injury mismatches every week? That's exactly what Sports Injury Central can give you. They're going to tell you what games to bet based on the hidden injury advantages. So their team of doctors will provide the data and their algorithm will tell you which games to bet. Against the spread, overs, unders, in-game bets, and prop bets. Sick Picks has it all. So take advantage of their 59% winning percentage over the last two seasons and sign up today. The morning after. So hot out here. It's like the hot seat in Lincoln, Nebraska. For Scott Frost. It's a good college football joke. It's a 17 and a half point spread. Did you know that? Yeah. In favor of Alabama. Yeah. For sweating out my week one bets. Woo! Back to me. One more time. Back to me. That's a touchdown. Hook them horns, baby. Hook them horns? What if I did the other way? Oh, no. College football is still very exciting. Yes. Yes. The Sports Grid Network. 
football giants in the late rain down in Tennessee. Does anybody think this game is going to be a shootout? 35-34, raise your hands. Absolutely not. Come home, back home to the birds. But again, the thing is, I know we have to add these stupid caveats of we're Eagles fans, but you out there know how talented this football team is. It absolutely could be their season. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. It's Alvin Kamara, DeAndre Swift, uh, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Travis Kelsey. And the reason why I want to bring that up is because uh, in terms of Kelsey, I didn't notice this yesterday until after I got done with the Newswire show that Patrick Mahomes apologized to fantasy owners, essentially saying that this year it ain't going to be all about Hill and Kelsey. You're going to have to guess on a weekly basis. So love to hear those sort of comments. Doesn't make me feel any better. Uh, you're at the turn. Who are your two? The Sports Grid Network. We had a huge reaction yesterday to Warren Sharp at the MGM National Harbor doing the show for an hour. How about we get another dose of Warren today with the Sharp Report breaking down the Jets and Ravens? The Baltimore Ravens are going to get some extremely good production out of Isaiah Likely this season. And that wasn't something that was likely just a few years ago. Let's go back to the 2019 NFL season when Lamar Jackson threw 36 touchdown passes in just 15 starts. During that season, he was going to two tight end sets 54% of the time. The Ravens trotted out multiple tight ends and they were taking it to their advantage because this team was getting much more efficiency out of the passing game when Lamar Jackson was throwing out of two tight end sets. He had double the EPA per pass attempt and almost two more yards per pass attempt when they had two tight ends on the field as opposed to just one. But what happened? In 2020, they traded away their tight end number two and their third tight end got hurt, Nick Boyle. Last year, they tried to trade for a tight end, but he was not productive in terms of Josh Oliver, and Nick Boyle once again got hurt. And as a result, the Baltimore Ravens had to lo lower their pass rate out of two tight end sets tremendously. They went from 54% in 2019 down to 25% each of the last two years. This season, because they now have Isaiah Likely, I think this team is going to ratchet up their usage of two tight end sets. What that's going to mean, because they might double it this year, is a lot more production out of Lamar Jackson in this passing game. His efficiency spikes when he's throwing the football out of two tight end sets. One thing to remember for week one, the New York Jets, this defense last season was the worst in the NFL against two tight end sets. They allowed 9.2 yards per pass attempt. I think Lamar Jackson is going to come out scorched earth in this first game, have a lot of production throwing the football and using a lot more two tight end sets than he did last season. Warren Sharp just styling at the National Harbor. I think uh, Lamar Jackson's going to go off on the Jets because the Jets stink. How's that sound?